Welcome to the R video tutorial on ANOVA in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to conduct an analysis of variance test, or ANOVA, using the R statistical software. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is get some data. So I'm using the file.choose, and I'm going to read it from a CSV file. The file that I'm interested in is on my desktop and is called Mary D.O. All right, so R has read that in. Why don't we take a look at it? So we can just type the name of the variable, and it will print it for us, print the data set for us. All right, and as you can see in here, we have variable that is continuous and since it's numeric, and we have another one that's categorical and it's IDing the stream. The other one is the dissolved oxygen measurement at that stream at that time. All right, we'd like to create a side-by-side -side box plot. This will put box plots right next to each other so we can look for any differences in the distributions or means that we're interested in. That way we know what to expect when we look at our ANOVA and we can spot any places where there might be some odd values as well. All right, so here is our side-by-side -side box plot. Notice that looking at this, that the various creeks that are listed here do not see appear to have a constant mean. Now that doesn't mean that this is a test. It's just an, a quick analysis of a box plot. It is not a test. You need to conduct a, a analysis of variance test in order to determine whether or not differences really exist among these groups or these creeks. All right, so to do an ANOVA table, it's very simple. We're going to write it into a variable called do2.aov. You can name it anything you want. This is just the name that I have for this analysis of variance. The function we're going to use is called AOV, analysis of variance. There's also another function in R called ANOVA, A-N-O-V-A, but we're not going to consider that here. This is when you have for when you have balanced data. That means each group has the same number of observations, and this one will work quite well. All right, so I put in my response variable, which is data1 dollar sign dissolved oxygen. Then I'm going to put a tilde, and then I'm going to put my groups. So data1 dollar sign stream holds the group names, and everything else will work out from there. Now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to run a summary. So I'm going to type in summary do2.aov, and that's going to give me an abbreviated ANOVA table. That way I can look at that and get my overall F-test before I proceed on with any multiple comparisons procedure. So let's run this and see what it looks like. All right, so this gives us our ANOVA table. Notice we have a column for the source, which is the stream and the residuals. We have degrees of freedom. We have a sum of squares. We have the mean squares. We have the F value, and we have the P value associated with that F value. We have that for each source of variation. It also provides significant codes, which I pretty much ignore because I like to choose my own significance level and not rely on the one that R is providing. Okay, so based on this p-value that's very, very small, by the way, notice that it's uh, 0.00005399. That's what that e to the minus 07 means. We're going to move that over, and there's going to be six zeros in front of that five. All right. So the next thing we might want to do, now that we know that a difference exists by whatever your significance level is probably, we'd like to know where those differences are. And a Tukey's HSD is a common method to determine where those differences exist. All right, so this spits out a table that you will have to pick apart to look for the differences. Okay, it says Tukey's multiple comparisons of means 95% family-wise confidence level. Now, inside Tukey's HSD, you can change the confidence level, but you will need to go in and change that, and I would suggest that you would look in the help for that. All right, so by looking at the column that says P adjusted, we notice that the last row has a P value, 0.9924419. That would mean that the Tanana and Kandanga creeks are not different. 
They would be statistically the same. However, the other ones appear to be different. Now, you need to tease these apart because you'll notice that they're not listed in a nice order. So you need to tease them apart so that you can determine what exactly this means. And you should be learning that in your statistics class on how to tease this apart. All right. So this has been the R video tutorial on how to conduct ANOVA with R. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.